بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بدنا نحكي عن اللي هو المسلز از التشو اوكي المحاضره الماضيه بلشنا بالحكي انه قلنا انه المسل عباره عن تشو سبيشاليز فور كونتراكشن اند ترانسميشن اوف ذا امبلسز وحكينا انه المسل هاف اونلي وان فانكشن اللي هي الكونتراكشن عشان هيك بنحكي انه المسل ذي ار يعني اكستريم اكزامبل اوف سبيشاليزيشن اند ديفرنشيشن for a limited and specific function muscle as i said only has one function contraction and otherwise for example connective tissue or epithelia they have several function but for the muscle only we have function that other thing we said always associated with the connective tissue as we see as uh, we are going to discuss later We will see that the muscle always surrounded by a connective tissue surround each muscle then each bundles then the whole muscle which is the endomysium perimysium and the epimysium and this connective tissue is very important because this connective tissue will form a tendon or aponeurosis which are going to attach the muscle with the bone the other thing almost all uh, always associated with the nervous tissue we know that for the muscle to be able to contract there is uh, impulses should be come from the brain and orders to contract otherwise the muscle will not be able to do the contraction we can see here as i said muscle is always asso associated with the connective tissue we can see here this is the muscle we have one end and we have the another end and we can see here this is the tendon and we can see here the muscle is attached to the bone by the tendon and here also the muscle is attached to the another bone by the tendon okay and this tendon is the collection of the endomysium the perimysium or the epimysium which surround as i said the muscle cell the muscle bundles or the whole muscles we have three types of muscle we have the smooth muscle we have the skeletal muscle and we have the cardiac muscle the skeletal muscle and the cardiac muscle also is called the striated muscle as we are going to see in the next slides we will see that the skeletal muscle have cross striation whereas the smooth muscle does not have these striations okay so that why they call it smooth muscle and the other muscle which is the skeletal and cardiac are called the striated muscles we'll start with the smooth muscle cells we'll say that they are spindle in shape nucleus is centrally located the ends are blunt ended the shape of the nucleus is almost like a cigar So that way they call it cigar shaped nucleus. Okay. The other important thing we can see here, they have very long cytoplasmic processes. Okay. So if we took a section from this area here, we'll not be able to see the nucleus in all cells. Only limited of number of cells we can see the nucleus. And the reason for that because they have very long cytoplasmic processes this is the, again they are spindle in shape they have very long cytoplasmic processes the nucleus is cigar shape and it's centrally located again this is the shape of this muscle cell as I said they are spindle in shape okay centrally located and the end are blunt ended and as I said it's a cigar shaped nucleus here we can see different section of the smooth muscle for the first one which is are taking in the longitudinal section okay it's almost parallel to the long axis we can see here the nucleus the cigar shape and we can see the cytoplasm okay has the pink color And this is because it contains a lot of the contractile element, which is the actin and myosin. In the other hand, if we have a cross section, 
which we cut through the transverse section, we'll see here most of the profile we could not see the nucleus only limited area we can see the nucleus and the shape of the nucleus will be not cigar shape it will be oval in shape and we can see the profile of nucleus to the cytoplasm is very low I mean uh, I mean by this the amount of the nucleus to the cytoplasm we can see that the amount of cytoplasm a number of the nucleus to the cytoplasm is very low we can see here this is the smooth muscle they lie adjacent to each other they form a sheath okay between these cells there will be a gap junction and always I said when whenever we have a gap junction means its need for communication as I said before if we Trans uh, transfer minerals from one cell to another cell that mean that there is information transmitted from one cell to another cell. The other thing we can see here the pinocytic vesicles present and this is very important because they are, they are responsible for the ingestion of the hormones because we know that hormone for example oxytocin affect this muscle for uh, contraction function for example also we have the neurotransmitter which is responsible for induce these cells to contract also anything material like nutrient can be ingested by these phenocytic vesicles now we are going to talk about the striated muscle for the striated muscle, we have two types of striated muscle. We have the skeletal muscle and we have the cardiac muscle. One important thing, they are more similar than they are different. By this I mean these cells are similar. Okay, there are some differences between them, but they are more similar than they are different. For example, here we can see these cross striations. These cross striations are only found on the skeletal muscle and the cardiac muscle muscle okay and the most common type will be the skeletal muscles the skeletal muscle which is the voluntary muscle which is usually under the conscious control by this i mean if we want this muscle to contract they're controlled by the central nervous system is easily we can contract this muscle when we compare it to the cardiac or the smooth muscle always associated with the nervous tissue for example, if there's injury to the nerve, directly will be paralysis of this muscle. This muscle will, not, will be not be able to contract. Okay, so only response to the nervous stimuli. Most abundant form, uh, almost the skeletal muscle uh, uh, comprise uh, about 40% of the total body weight. Okay. By this I mean that 40% of the total of our body weight is skeletal muscle. Main function to provide movement without skeletal muscle we could not move. Usually affected by hormones, nutrition or disease. For example for people that have malnutrition directly there will be reduction in their muscle mass. If there's a disease for example atrophy or there's injury to the nerves Directly, there is a reduction in the mass of these muscles. The most important feature of this muscle, we can see here the cross striation. We can see this red and the other white cross striations. Okay, these cells, very large cells, and usually between these cells, usually we have the blood supply. In cross striation of this muscle, we can see that their nucleus are found in the periphery. When we talked about the smooth muscles, we said that this muscle, the nucleus, is in the center. And a cross section will not be able to see the cross striation, whereas in the longitudinal section, we'll be able to see the cross striations. And we can see here the nucleus are found nucleoli are found in the periphery of these muscle fibers each one of these cells 
is a muscle fiber by muscle fiber I mean it's a muscle cells all of this structure with all of these nuclei they compromise the skeletal muscle fiber cells this only one cells as I said the nucleus is found in the periphery as I said this is only one muscle cells the nucleoli are found in the periphery inside we have the contractile elements which is the actin and myosin and the actin and myosin form the myofibril the plasma membrane of the muscle cells we call it the sarcolemma whereas the cytoplasm we call it the sarcoplasm so the myofiber which is the muscle cells as I said is the basic cell of the skeletal muscle may have thousands of nuclei the diameter of these cells around 100 to 150 micron in diameter single cells maybe several feet long we know that uh, one foot is equal 36 centimeters so one cell could be the length of this cells could be one meter okay so this cells is very long contain sometime almost around a thousand of nuclei inside we have the cytoplasm which is the sarcoplasm we have the myofibrils and these myofibrils is consist of actin and myosin as i said here we have the contractile elements cytoplasm is wholly almost wholly contractile elements by this there's a limited number of the organelles only what we can see in the cytoplasm is the contractile element which is the actin and myosin okay each myofibril you can see this myofibrils anchored at the end of the myofiber so if we consider this is one long myofiber so the myofibrils will be anchored at this side here also in the opposite side okay and this allowed these myofibers for contraction here we can see the cross striations these cross striations are called the I band and the red one which is the A band okay between the I band and A band here we can see here at the middle of the I band there is a Z line and this Z line is found in the middle of the I band and you can see it in the other side we have the I band and there's the other line which is the Z line so between the Z line to Z line there's a structure we call it the sarcomere in this sarcomere it's the basic contractile unit of the striated muscle okay we can see here this is the area of the I band and this is the area of A band and we can see this is the line which is found in the middle of the I band from the this line to this line which is the Z line to Z line we call it the sarcomere and this sarcomere is the basic contractile unit of the striated muscle the smallest part of the muscle cells that contract we call it the sarcomere and each myofiber is consist each muscle cells is consist of million of these series of the sarcomeres and each sarcomere contract okay it will be contraction at this area about 0.4 micron each okay and as I said <coughs> these sarcomere, uh, sarcomeres are made of actin and myosin microfilament <coughs> so as I said these sarcomeres are made of actin and myosin the actin is found in this area here where at this area here where we have the A band 
we have part from the myosin also the actin so this is the area of the a band you can see here we have the thick myofilaments which is the myosin and we have the very thin so when these come together and the area here is reduced this means that this sarcomere is contracted again you can see here this is the nucleus or the muscle cells this is the area of the I band the area of the A band and this is the area of the Z line and from Z line to Z line this is the sarcomere which is the basic contractile unit of the muscle cells similar here we have the area of the myosin and the actin and here we have the Z line and from Z line to Z line this is the sarcomere for the muscle fiber types as I said we have three types we have the red fiber we have the white fiber and finally we have the intermediate fiber the red fiber from the name they have the red color because they have higher myoglobin which is the oxygen storing pigment content okay and they have numerous mitochondria and fatigue resistance by fatigue resistance means they not get tired very fast okay and they are the slow twitch the other type which is the white fiber for example found in the pectoral region they are the type 2 the fast twitch they have white color compared to the red fiber because they have lower amount of the myoglobin and also lower amount of mitochondria okay the third type which is the intermediate which is the characteristic is between the type 1 and type 2 very important thing here that innervation control the fiber differentiation for example if we have a red fiber for example that found in the thigh region if we do a denervation we cut the nerve that supply them they directly change into the white fibers and the other thing if we replace the nerve from the white fiber to the red fiber muscle again directly will be changed into the white fiber muscles as we can see here we have the red and white fiber we have a histochemical staining the third type which has the characteristic which is between type 1 and type 2 the third type of muscle we have we have the cardiac muscle which is again is a form of striated muscle found only in the heart similar to the skeletal muscle because we have the cross striation but there is very important difference usually the muscle cells are very small compared to the skeletal muscle skeletal muscle as i said their length may reach several feet but the muscle cell are much more smaller okay as i said there's some historical difference between them even the response to different stimuli as we know that inside the heart we have the sa node we have the av node and we have the bundle of his and these fiber which is responsible for the contraction of the muscle so the muscle of the heart not controlled or not under the conscious control of our central nervous system i could not tell my heart to beat or stop usually what other important thing about the cardiac muscle they have the band pattern of the cardiac muscle we have the crustation which is similar to the skeletal muscle their nucleus are centrally located nucleus and there is only one nucleus per cell this is one difference from the skeletal muscle as i said they have their nucleus in the periphery and the other thing they are very long cells compared to here we have very very small cells usually the cardiac muscle fiber composed of the several cardiac muscle cells by this i mean uh, the muscle fiber okay 
not composed of one only single cell. They are composed of different cells. And these cells, there is junctional zones between them, which we call the intercalated disc. We can see here, we have different muscle cells, okay? And we can see here, this is in the middle, which connect these different cells. We call it the intercalated disc. And this is a diagnostic feature for the cardiac muscle. If we see the intercalated disc, right away we say this tissue is from the cardiac, uh, from the heart, or contain the cardiac muscle because the intercalated disc only found in the muscle these intercalated disc they provide adhering junction also gap junction adhering junction which works as a glue which connect different muscle cells in the other hand the gap junction as i said before whenever we have gap junction we have mineral transfer from one cell to other cells and this equal the telecommunication between the different cells so this intercalated disc provide communication also provide adhesion site for the cardiac muscle we can see here all each one of these we call it myofiber cells and these myofiber cells not consist of one single cell they are, consist of multiple cells uh, cells and between these cells we have the intercalated disc as I said this intercalated disc is the diagnostic feature of the cardiac muscle we say that the cardiac muscle we have the cross striation the nucleus is centrally located whereas in the skeletal muscle the nucleus is located in the periphery Okay, we can see here, this is the intercalated disc and it's divided into transverse portion and we have the lateral portion. We can see here, this is the fascia adherence, which is the connection between the muscle provide adhesion. Whereas at this area here, we have the gap junction, which is a small force between these muscles. And as I said, allows the minerals to pass from one cell to another cell. As I said, this is important for communication. We can see here, this is the cross striation, and we can see here these, these muscles are branched, okay? Each one of these, we call it the muscle fiber, and it's not consist of one single cell, it consists of multiple cells, and between these cells, we have the intercalated disc in a cross section it's almost like smooth muscle we have the nucleus in the center and we could not see the cross striation whereas in the longitudinal section we can see the intercalated disc the nucleus in the center and we can see the cross striations okay and here we can see in the cross section how we could differentiate between smooth cardiac and skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle, the nucleus is found in the periphery. This is easy to differentiate. But for the cardiac and the smooth muscle, we need to look for the profile of the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Whenever we have more nucleus in the field we are looking in the cardiac muscle okay whenever we see like there's low profile of the nucleus to the cytoplasm we look uh, the slide we are looking at will be smooth muscle as i said the reason for that because the smooth muscle they have very long cytoplasmic processes as i said for the muscle to be able to contract they need nerve impulses okay they have a control from the central nervous system or autonomic nervous system for the neuronal relationship in the muscle in the skeletal muscle the most elaborate and we can see later where i describe that 
it will be like neuromuscular junction for the smooth muscle it's simple but direct and the cardiac muscle controlled by non-neural network and internally as i said before we have the sa node we have the av node and also we have the bundle of his in the skeletal muscle we can see here this is the axons which is part from the neurons and we can see at this area we have this junction usually the nerve and the muscle that innervate we call it the motor unit and the location of the interaction site between the axons and the myofiber we call it the motor end plate or the myoneural junction so the muscle the whole muscle with the nerve that supply it we call it the motor unit whereas the muscle fiber which is the single muscle cells with the axons that supply it we call it yeah, the area of junction here we call it the motor end plate or the myoneural junction usually at this area here the axons lose their myelin sheath okay and the cytoplasm of these Schwann cells will fuse with the cytoplasm uh, sorry the plasma membrane of the Schwann cells will fuse with the plasma membrane of the myofiber and we will discuss it later when we discuss the central nervous system or the nervous tissue we can see here this is the muscle fiber we can see the cross striation this is the axons and we can see this is the area of the junction we call it the myoneural junction so the motor end plate only is found in the skeletal muscle it's not found in the smooth or cardiac muscle very important in transmission of the signal from the nervous system to the muscle okay and usually this transmission is by chemical in nature through the neurotransmitter as i said specialized structure of the plasma membrane of the myofiber at this area here we have junction between the plasma membrane of the axon with the plasma membrane of the myofiber this area here we call it the motor end plate or the myoneural junction you can see here this is the area of junction which is the motor end plate we can see here we have the myelin sheath which surround the axons at this area here the area of junction we lose the myelin sheath but the plasma membrane of the Schwann cell will fuse with the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber this is scanning electron microscopy this is the nerve and from the nerve we have several axons each axons supply one muscle fiber okay and this area here we call it the motor end plate very important even if we have the muscle fiber they have several feet in length there is only one myoneural junction motor end plate only found in one area one spot even if the muscle fiber they are several feet in length this is very important point which is one axon control several myofibers but only for each myofiber there is one motor end plate for the smooth muscle we have these axons these axons come in contact with the muscle fiber but they don't form the motor in the plate okay and usually they release their new transmitter around these muscle fiber then but pinocytosis these cells will uptake this neurotransmitter and induce their contraction in the cardiac muscle the control of this muscle as I said it's by non neuronal network 
and use and it is internal as I said three the SA node AV node and through bundle of hash as I said in the anatomy lecture always the muscle is always associated or associated with the connective tissue as I said the muscle cells is surrounded by a connective tissue reticular fibers then each muscle bundles is surrounded by a dense regular connective tissue which is the epimysium and the whole muscle is surrounded by the epimysium which is dense irregular connective tissue so we have endomysium perimysium epimysium the whole muscle is surrounded by a dense irregular connective tissue perimysium also surrounded by dense irregular whereas the endomysium is surrounded by reticular fibers as we can see here the whole muscle is surrounded by the epimysium then we have the perimysium and the muscle cells each muscle fiber cells is surrounded by the endomysium which is reticular fiber whereas the perimysium and the epimysium is uh, dense irregular connective tissue so again the whole muscle epimysium muscle bundles perimysium and each muscle cells or myofiber cells is surrounded by the endomysium okay so each muscle fiber the connective tissue surrounded which is a reticular fiber will be the endomysium for the muscle regeneration and repair as I said in the beginning of my lecture that the muscle cells cannot divide okay and this is very important because if there's a damage or injury to the muscle if it's limited there will be a healing otherwise this muscle tissue will be replaced by a fibrous tissue and when there is a replacement by a fibrous tissue there is loose of the structure which is the muscle cells also lose in the function which is the contraction okay so very important in the damage scarring which is the white fibrous tissue okay which is non-contractile as I said there will be lost in the function there is scanty reserve of myoplast in the skeletal muscle we call it the satellite cells if the injury is limited these cells the satellite cells which is found between the basal lamina and the myofiber these cells can proliferate and differentiate into myoplast then can adhere or unite with the myofibers but if the damage is very large as I said there will be a scar filling these satellite cells or the reserve cells which is stem like cells not exist in smooth muscle or cardiac muscle so if there's if there's a damage in the smooth muscle or the cardiac muscle right away there will be a filling by a scar tissue now we'll discuss two terms, which is the atrophy and the hypertrophy. Okay, atrophy means is the loss of the muscle mass. This is very important. There is no loss in the number, but there is loss in the muscle mass. As I said in the beginning of the lecture, the muscle cells inside it we have the contractile element. So for any reason, if we don't use our muscle, they will undergo muscle atrophy which is the loss of the muscle mass and by mean muscle mass I mean the contractile element and this is often reversible if you don't use your muscle they undergo atrophy but if you use them again they will return to the normal size and if you do more exercise there may be increase in the muscle mass at that case we call it the hypertrophy we can see here we have the area of the normal muscle fiber where as we can see here this is the area of the atrophied fibers we can see here there is no loss in the muscle number okay we don't lose this myofiber 
Instead, we lose the mass. And usually, as I said, in the mass, we have the contractile elements. Causes of atrophy, disuse, if you don't use the muscle, the muscle will undergo atrophy. Malnutrition, if the people that don't eat enough proteins and enough food, that will result again in the man, uh, in muscle atrophy. Very important thing, if there's a damage for the nerves, right away, there will be paralysis and there is a loss of the muscle mass. Cardiac disease may cause muscle atrophy. The opposite for the atrophy is the hypertrophy. Hyper increase more. If you do a lot of exercise, your muscle will go under undergoes hypertrophy. Okay, again, in hypertrophy, there is no increase in the muscle number of the muscle fibers. There is only increase in the muscle mass. And as I said, the muscle mass equal the contractile element, which is the actin and myosin.